News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight, a prank 911 call turns a neighborhood upside down. And a drug extraction facility is raided by police. News 25 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Unet Gentry. News 25, local coverage you can count on. Law enforcement surrounds a quiet, gated community. It's Tuesday, March 19th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Unette Gentry. Residents are shaken when police arrive in full force to a quiet, senior, gated community. Nye County Sheriff's Office detectives, deputies, investigators, and SWAT team were dispatched to the gated senior community on Wilson Road last night. Police surrounded a home inside Desert Greens for a suspect who had reportedly shot his wife with a high-powered rifle and was going to kill other individuals, according to the 911 phone call received by Nye County Dispatch. Police were in high alert during the activity and residents were asked to stay inside their homes. The residents of interest belong to local attorney Carl Jogger, whose mother lives inside this home. Negotiators attempted to call the individual outside the home to surrender. Lieutenant David Berkowitz told News 25 that he in fact spoke to the attorney who said that it wasn't him that made the phone call and in fact his mother was inside the home but probably was sleeping at the time. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue were also dispatched to the scene to be on standby. Law enforcement were able to eventually make contact with the individual inside the residence who was safe. The Nye County Sheriff's Office says that this now appears to be some type of prank and now have shifted their investigation to apprehending the person who called 911, reporting to be the attorney and using valuable manpower, frightening the area residents and general public. If you have any information, you're urged to contact the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 775-751-7000. You can remain anonymous. And police raid a business set to sell extraction marijuana oil located on Calvada Boulevard. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies and detectives executed a search warrant at a business at 1306 Calvada Boulevard for suspected drug activity. The commercial building is being searched by law enforcement officers for a suspected illegal marijuana-related operation. Nye County Emergency Management Hazmat was also dispatched to the scene with Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue. News 25 has learned that this is some type of extrication facility in which the employees are wearing hazmat suits. It's unknown at this time if any suspects were taken into custody. Well, a total of three horses now have tested positive for the equine herpes virus. State agricultural officials have ordered the quarantine for the two additional horses in Clark County. This following February's rodeo here in Pahrump, in which one horse was diagnosed with the illness. Horse owners in Nevada and surrounding states have been warned to watch for signs of fever, cough, or runny nose in any animals that may have been exposed to the virus known as EHV-1. It can cause respiratory illness in young horses, abortions in pregnant mares, and neurologic disease in older horses. Such a sad case. Yeah. Yes. Stay tuned to News 25. We'll be right back with much more local news. You're watching KPVM News 25. Local coverage you can count on. Well, let's go to Unit Gentry with the latest cases happening in our local courts. In this week's court report, two suspects arrested after trying to pawn cameras that were reportedly stolen from a residence earlier in the day make their appearances in court. Vincent Scocozo and Joseph Nelson were taken into custody after trying to make the reported fraudulent transaction at Superpawn here in Pahrump.
Notably, Scocoso's girlfriend, Amber Lozano, was also arrested in connection to this case. Police say during the initial burglary, multiple firearms, an iPhone, jewelry, and cameras were stolen. Upon officers' initial contact with the suspects, they say they noticed a Roger 38 caliber handgun in the car with the suspects that was taken in the burglary case. Both Scocoso and Nelson denied stealing anything or having stolen property, but both suspects were arrested. Arrested. Then two days later, a search of Scocoso's residence yielded ammunition blanks, a camo sling that was once attached to a stolen gun, a 38 caliber magazine, an ammo can that contained AR-15 mags, a broken glass pipe with suspected methamphetamine residue, and another glass pipe with suspected meth residue. Later, deputies say Scocoso made a spontaneous utterance that he would take responsibility for stealing the firearms, and it was recorded reported on an officer's body camera. That same day, officers ran a search of Scocoso's pawn history, and it showed that Scocoso sold multiple power tools and two gold rings, which were later discovered to be stolen. Also notably, a reported stolen gun called the Humane Horse Killer was observed in photographs on Scocoso's phone. Finally, Lozano was arrested at the Nye County Detention Center while she was on video visitation with Scocoso. Police say she pawned the stolen humane horse killer to Superpawn. Lozano stated she received that item from Scocoso and that he told her that he couldn't pawn it because it was a firearm and that he received it for free from another person. Scocoso is in custody $101,000 cash or bond. Notably, Scocoso has three open cases in justice court with multiple charges, including this recent burglary charge, burglary charges from back in November 2018, and a speeding charge. During Scocoso's preliminary hearing, his public defender, attorney Carl Jogger, advised due to the amended complaint filed and additional discovery that is forthcoming, the preliminary hearing would need to be continued. Therefore, he waives the 14-day rule. Attorney Carl Jogger made a motion for a reduction of bail. The state objected, however, and presented argument in support of that objection. Then the court denies the bail reduction motion and leaves bail set at $101,000. Finally, the court set pretrial for April 3rd. Scocoso also has a preliminary hearing on that same day for the burglary charges he racked up last November. Nelson has an active cash bail or bond $20,000 and has a pretrial hearing connected to this case on April 3rd as well. Notably, Nelson also has two cases previously bound over to district court involving burglary, failure to appear, and use of a controlled substance charges. This has been your court report. I'm Unette Gentry for News 25. Thanks, Unette. Well, the Foxconn facility is getting ready to start manufacturing. Angela Miles has that story and more. Topping our news, Foxconn is gearing up to produce flat screen panels in Wisconsin by the end of the year. Construction will begin later this year. There were mixed signals earlier. Foxconn was pulling back on that job. Now the company plans to build a smaller plant known as Generation 6 factory and to hire 13,000 people. Lyft is on track with its IPO. The initial public offering could value that company around $20 billion. Lyft executives predict investors will pay about $65 for the stock. Mechanics at Southwest are voting on a tentative agreement. It includes a 20% raise. Apple is giving investors an early peek at the new iPad Air and the updated iPad Mini. It's ahead of the company's big event Monday, March 25th. Warner Brothers chairman and CEO is stepping down. Kevin Tuhari allegedly pushed for auditions for actress Charlotte Kirk. The two are said to be in a relationship. Thanks, Angela. Well, the Nye County Treasurer gave a current status report to commissioners during last Monday's meeting. Well, it, it only took uh, 15 months and then three treasurers <laughs> to get you a report, but I promise you I would. So um, the treasurer's report, part of the, this, it's actually two reports. So there's a treasurer's report and then also the bank reconciliation. So the treasurer's report is, uh, is completed. The bank reconciliation is a work in progress right at the moment because we're still having to research items that are not reconciling, that are um, errors. And we need to be able to, to find the originals of the receding um, or the sources of those errors um, before we can reconcile it. Um, 
the the bank rack and treasurer's report um, I don't think uh, maybe a lot of the public understand how important this combination of reports is on a monthly basis and I hope to be able to, to help help the public and um, also you as commissioners understand that this is the opportunity for us as um, as an auditor to go through and reconcile the bank statements to the receipts to our um, accounting system. And without doing that, there's an opportunity for errors to go un unseen, unnoticed. And um, the report that, that our independent auditor um, released when they, 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 they did the audit for fiscal year um, 2018 um, revealed that there were uh, a substantial amount of errors. And you'll see in this report that there's a list of those same errors and then also additional errors that were revealed um, during the, the work on, on putting together the bank reconciliation that you have in front of you right now. So it just keeps kind of getting bigger. And if you recall, uh, for those of you commissioners that have been on the uh, commissioners for many, many years, um, the, the Treasury Report Bank and Bank Reconciliation was probably about five pages. Um, it's now up to, I think, somewhere around nine, and it will continue to get bigger as we go forward until we get to um, the, the reconciliation for this month. Um, of this year, because that's when we're going to be able to enter the errors that we currently have. And could a new marijuana facility be coming to Nye County? We'll tell you all about it when News 25 returns. News 25 is brought to you by Bill and Robin Law, injury attorneys. Injured? Need money? Get Bill and Robin, your local Pahrump injury attorneys. Well, county commissioners are setting a date to look into a new license for a marijuana facility. The problem they seem to be facing is that they have recently put on hold approving any new licenses at this time. Well, I've discussion and deliberation regarding a request to set a date, time, and location for a public hearing, Mike County Bill 2905. Bill proposing amend Mike County Code Title 5, Business License and Regulations, Chapter 5.32, entitled Marijuana, medical marijuana establishment providing for the severability constitution effective date thereof. Other matters properly relating thereto. And two, read the title of the bill into the record. Mr. Chairman, I'd yes. like to make a motion to set the date and time for April 2nd at 10 a.m. Um, and I'll read the I'll read the title into the bill. But I also had a before we go. Before, just don't let me forget, I need to make some suggestions to staff before we go any further. I have a motion. Did I have a second? Yes. Second. Okay. Uh, Brett, you wanted to comment? Uh, yes, commissioners. I just wanted to actually suggest a the second meeting in April instead, just so we can address a concern with this current draft that just came up. What's the date? What's the date of the second April meeting? April 16th, right? 16th. Okay. I'll make. I'll amend that motion to read to be April 16th at 10 a.m. Amended second. We've just set back a business that had to do with marijuana, and we're writing currently writing our ordinances, and yet we set someone back from being able to get their licensing because we're waiting for the legislative session to be over. Shouldn't we be holding these items off until after legislative session is over? What we only can comment here is to set this or not set this, not to weigh in on the ramifications or non-ramifications of action that was taken this morning. So I would not uh, recommend to further that discussion off the agenda item. We had this board, a former board, recently at the end of 2017, possibly the beginning of 2018, directed staff to move all fees to a resolution and take them out of the ordinance so that we don't have to go through two public hearings or exhaustive um, processes of changing our ordinances when the fees are reconsidered. So I wanted to remind Brett of that. He probably was not on staff when that decision was made. That's fine. But if right. staff would look into that. Right now we're yeah. dealing with setting date and time. I understand that, but there's no sense in having to redo it. I know, but when public comes up, I remind them we're talking about date and time, so I'm going to remind us of the same thing. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 
I, and I am not the public. I am Aye. the one who directs. Donna? Aye. Thank you. And ladies, if you're behind on your screenings, you're in luck because the first annual Women's Health Fair is happening this weekend. We are very excited at Seroptimist to be hosting the first Seroptimist Women's Health and Wellness Fair on March 23rd at the Prop Nugget, specifically for women's health. I mean, a lot of health um, issues relate to both men and women, but there are some that are specifically to women. And so we really want to, because we're an organization that our mission is improving the lives of women and girls, uh, we really want to focus on women's health. We have approximately 75 vendors invited. Hopefully, we'll get at least 50%, but who knows. Um, they are vendors from healthcare providers um, to um, healthcare retail places. Um, we just, and it's free to the vendors. If any of you out there are vendors in healthcare, uh, please let us know, let Deanna know. Deanna will let me know, although I do have a number. We hope to cover everything, not only physical health, but mental and emotional health as well. Free to the public, and this year, because it's our first one, free to the vendors. Give us a call, 702-592-5276. Well, every year, 1.2 million students drop out of high school in the United States. But now, an innovative approach for those struggling high schoolers is getting those high-risk students across the finish line. Kim Martinez explains. I'm here, it, everything changed. Melanie Garda's future is certainly a lot brighter these days, along with thousands of other students who at one time couldn't make it in a typical school. Thanks to premier high schools in Texas and Arkansas, those who may be in danger of becoming a dropout get a chance to flip their future in the right direction. It's going to be your four years of English and your mathematics, your geometry, your algebras, and your pre-calculus or math models, your sciences. The how in terms of the delivery of instruction is different than you would ordinarily find in a traditional high school. Luis Gonzalez, the campus director, says the difference here has to do with independent study, flexible hours, and the smaller size of premier schools. I came because I was like so behind, like I would miss a lot of school and, or like I wouldn't understand something and they were like, they had other students to take care of, like more than they have here. So they couldn't really like help me out how they could help me out here. So far, 14,000 students, teens who had no other path to a diploma, have successfully made it to graduation. In addition to regular classes, Premier also offers students who are interested the chance to learn a job skill. Our Premier High Schools are starting to incorporate career and technical education programs, so these students get hands-on training on things like culinary, floral design, some AV classes or really welding, things you. like that. And they can really earn certifications that are good for real world jobs. Whatever path the students choose after they get their diploma, whether it's a skilled <laughs> job or even going on to college, this innovative school is helping them find their way. I didn't think I was going to go to college or do anything after high school. I thought I was not capable of doing it. So now I think I am. For Ed Newsfeed, I'm Kim Martinez. News 46 Weather Cam is brought to you by Glenn Lerner Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. All right, let's take a look outside at our weather. Look at that. Michael Donahue is going to tell us what we can expect when we return. KPVM News 25, local coverage you can count on. All right, today in Las Vegas, 77 degrees, your, high, your lows tonight, 55, Death Valley, 86, with your low of 63, Amargosa, 77, 52, Beatty, 73, 49, Goldfield, 62, 42, Tonopah, your high is 61, and your low of 41, Carson City, today was 62, with your low tonight, 40. Fallon 6949 and Fernley 6647.
Currently 74 degrees, mostly cloudy skies here in Pahrump with your high of 77. Winds out of the south-southeast at 7 miles per hour with humidity at 19 percent. Sunrise 649 in the morning. And tonight, partly cloudy skies with your low of 52. Winds out of the south-southeast at 7 miles per hour with humidity at 33 percent. Sunset 654 tonight. And tomorrow, 50% chance of rain with your high of 60, your low of 46. Thursday, the clouds are still hanging around with 62.44. Friday, clearing up just a bit at 67 as your high and 50 as your low. Saturday, the clouds are coming back with 66.45. Sunday, clear skies with your high of 69, your low of 46. Monday and Tuesday, some clouds in the sky. Monday, 74 is your high, 51 is your low. Tuesday, high of 76 and 54 as your low. And I know that we are going to go to one more story, aren't we, Minette? Yes. And just like to mention that tomorrow is the first official day of spring. And we've already sprung forward time-wise. But now it's time to think about other things to do in the spring. Spring cleaning and home decor. That's why in our Angie's List today, we're talking about spring decor and redecorating trends. The kitchen is the heart of the home. It's the hub for activity and family life. So investing in upgrades makes sense. When you're inspired to show a little love to your kitchen, it's important to work with someone who can help you with a potentially big investment as you consider your design options. If you hire somebody that knows what they're doing, they can make the most of your dollar. They can help you with the best design. It might cost less, it might cost more, but it'll be the best use of your hard-earned dollar. That comes from using people who really know what they're doing. Making the most of your money is important because the trend that she's seeing are high-quality, expensive finishes like granite and marble and custom lighting such as under-cabinet and in-cabinet lights. People are spending more money. They're using more beautiful materials, more costly materials, and they're able to make some additions to their the old kitchen design ideas that cost more, look better. Those beautiful and more expensive finishes do come with a higher price tag, but they also have staying power and can save you money in the long run. Some of the things that we used 25 years ago might have been more cost effective but they did not last so you probably you might have replaced those things three times when you could have bought something really good cost more but last longer. If you're still not ready to jump in head first you can take smaller steps towards quality updates. If you're inspired to make changes to your kitchen, but the cost of a trendy remodel is out of your budget, consider some small updates, such as a new backsplash, new hardware, or even a new kitchen faucet. It's going to give your kitchen a new look and feel without breaking the bank. Even if you're making smaller changes, being mindful of the finishes you select can save you money and elbow grease over time. I think you should choose materials that are easily maintained and last a long time. That's in addition to picking what you love or what you think looks good in the picture. If you're still not sure what upgrades are right for you, take your dream kitchen for a test drive. Try it out before making a remodel decision. If you're not sure you're going to like a modern, sleek kitchen, consider a staycation and rent a house where it has that design in their kitchen so that you can experience it before you make the investment. To find the right professional to help with your kitchen remodel or to just browse for kitchen inspiration, find what you're looking for at Angie'sList.com. Wow, beautiful kitchens. I know, we're dying. Those yes. look nice. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanne O'Donnell. And I'm Jeanette Gentry. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Good night.